Ladies and gents, next up is Lucy Sarif, who is the Head of Strategy and Planning at Lady Geek and Associate Director at Little Miss Geek. Her topic is how to ensure the next Mark Zuckerberg is a woman. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, okay. <laughs> Good evening. I appreciate there's lots of other fantastic things going on here this evening. So for those of you that have come, I appreciate you giving me your time. I want to start by asking a question. Why is it that women are being left out of the technological revolution? And how can we change this? So Little Miss Geek is a campaign inspiring girls and women to want to change the world through technology. We want to ensure that the next Mark Zuckerberg is a woman. Currently, only 17%, that's one seven, of the technology workforce is female. And over the last 10 years, this has been dropping by 0.5% each year. If we continue at this trend, by 2043, there'll be less than 1% of the technology workforce will be female. Less than 1%. Now, in an industry that is shaping the future, this is outrageous. Or is it? Do women even care about technology? Well, when we look at female consumers, technology consumers, Four out of 10 gadgets are now bought by women. That's nearly 50%. Over 60% of you, uh, Twitter followers, uh, users are female. And the fastest growing segment on Facebook is women over 55. When we've asked our female network, what is the one thing you couldn't live without? 85% said their smartphone. So what this means is that women are enjoying consuming technology, but they are not wanting to be part of creating technology. So why is there such a female deficit? Well, our work over the last three years in schools and the tech industry, we've identified three key barriers as to why there is a lack of women in technology. And the first one, is technology's image problem. And one of the exercises we do with Little Miss Geek when we go into schools is we ask both boys and girls to draw what they think someone in technology looks like. And to this date, no one of all the schools we've been to, nor boy nor girl, has drawn a woman. This is Lila. She says he would be old and his hair would be overgrown because he doesn't care what he looks like. He only cares about computers. Now, this may be an amusing image, but this is a serious issue. Technology is still being seen as the men's club for pizza-guzzling nerds who can't get girlfriends. Now, this isn't exactly an image that's going to entice women. Now, I appreciate there's nothing worse than groups that complain with what's going wrong in the world and don't do anything about it. Little Miss Geek is an action oriented campaign, and we have several different initiatives to address this issue. And one of these is we have a female hero program. And this is where we bring inspiring, influential, successful women in the technology industry. And yes, they do exist. And we bring them to the classroom and they share their stories and their journey of their success. And we find that this is an incredibly effective way of inspiring girls and demonstrating the opportunities that could lie ahead for them. Now, when we look at the origins of these perceptions, what we can see is that they tend to develop in our early environment. And that is often with our families. Now, I'm one of four, I have two brothers and a sister. And when I look back, I realize that there was a significant difference in the types of games my parents would play with my two brothers versus my sister and I, and also in the types of gifts we would get at Christmases and birthdays. Now, I've never been much of a girly girl, 
But despite that, I tended to receive gifts like this. My brothers, on the other hand, would receive Lego, trains, cars. And there was one year, one of my brothers got a Lego farm set. And I was so jealous. I wanted the Lego farm set. And he could sense this, and out of the kindness of his heart, which is quite difficult for young kids when it comes to toys, he said to me, don't worry, Lucy, when I finish building it, you can play with it. Okay, that was kind. But when I look back, that for me signifies a message that children grow up with. And that is that boys create things and girls consume things. Now, is it any wonder with messages like this that girls grow up with a lack of confidence and hunger and passion to want to be part of creating technology. But this is not just a gender issue, this is a cultural issue. In the Baltic states, women tend to make up over 50% of the technology workforce. In one of those countries, in Estonia, women actually make up over 70%, that's seven zero of the technology workforce. But in these cultures, Technology is seen as a highly respectable career opportunity for women and incredibly creative. 80% of women look for creativity in their roles for their career. However, in the UK, only 30% of women believe that technology can provide them with this opportunity. And for those of us that work in technology, we know it's one of the most creative industries out there. So why is it that women, 70% of women in the UK, don't agree with us? On one of my trips um, to a school with Little Mesquite, I was talking to a young girl, and she genuinely told me that she thought ICT stood for I can type. I can type. And this is where we identify barrier number two, and that is technology education system the way technology is taught at schools. And sadly, what we often find is that technology is incredibly uninspiring at schools. And the teachers don't tend to be experts in their field. My own experience was actually my ICT teacher was also my PE teacher. And even at 14 years old, I could tell that she didn't care about the subject. She didn't actually know that much about the subject. And that kind of signified a message of, well, this can't be a respectable subject for me to choose, or this isn't going to be an exciting career opportunity for me. What we also find is that the technology curriculum is out of date. One of the teachers we've been working with, with Little Miss Geek, told me that he is still having to teach students about floppy disks. Floppy disks. So what we see is that Girls and boys, their first experiences of computing at an early age is dull, and it's irrelevant to their lives. And our work has found that girls in particular look for things that are motivated by things that are relevant to their lives, and also that have a greater impact on the world around them. One of the initiatives Little Miss Geek does to address this issue is we run ICT school takeovers and after-school tech clubs. And this is where we bring cutting-edge technology in fun, interactive sessions, and it's an opportunity for the girls to explore these gadgets, to have fun with them, and to build on their confidence. I'd just like to show you something. I understand that the Minister for Culture, Communications and the Creative Industries will be marking the day by speaking at a Little Miss Geek celebration of fashion and technology. And I'm glad to see the Government Minister supporting efforts to encourage girls into ICT.
Wednesday, Little Miss Geek is back at St Xavier's School. It's all about wearable technology, so integrating technology into fabrics. Girls think that technology is boring. They think a career in technology is going to be dull. They think fashion is sexy. Today is about fusing those worlds that have smashed together and really inspiring the girls to consider a career in technology. enthusiasm from the girls from the first time that Little Miss Geek came in has been huge. Um, little sevens and eights and they've been telling their older sisters, their friends and showing them that girls can do this too. And what we did today was to introduce uh, these young girls, the Little Miss Geeks, uh, to our designs and our design process and how can you help create the technology of tomorrow. Crucially, every single student in there was captivated and hopefully will be hugely inspired and will be that next generation of staff that we need. We're here today, I'm so excited um, to see all these uh, 12 and 14 year old girls actually getting hands on with technology and seeing how technology is everywhere and how important it is that they are coding, that they're getting their hands on uh, kits like Little Miss Geek has uh, provided them, doing their own t-shirts with LEDs on them and it is astounding how much things have moved on in 10 years and this is today a real testament to that. I've actually been hugely inspired by the event performed by Little Miss Geek today because I've seen people coming from the fashion industry and how they're using technology to really broaden their horizons. Since we've been running initiatives like this, in less than a year, we have helped a school in London to increase the number of girls studying computer science by 52%. And that's in less than a year. So we know that initiatives like this are having a positive impact and making a difference in inspiring girls around technology. Now, thankfully, the government have woken up to the issues around the technology education system and is replacing ICT with computer science. Fantastic. Great. Well, when we look at uh, the amount of students uh, taking ICT and GCSEs uh, subjects, we've seen in the latest results that there's been a significant increase in the number of students taking these subjects. However, there's been a decrease in the number of girls choosing these subjects. So, the issue is getting worse and means that we all need to be part of inspiring these girls to make sure that they are wanting to study computer science and furthering their education in science and technology. Now, obviously, there are girls that study computer science and they are successful and they are brilliant and they go on and they get their degrees and then they get to the technology industry. And this is where we get to barrier number three. And that is the technology industry environment. Now, when we look at how technology was created, we see that it was created by men and for men. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, well, what's wrong with that? Business is business. Gender doesn't come into it. Or women can adapt. Well, our research and works would suggest otherwise. We work with Simon Baron Cohen, who's a professor of psychology at the University of Cambridge. And he is famous for his ES theory. And he distinguishes between two types of brain. And this is what helps us understand different behaviors and how we understand our environment. Now, he talks about the systemizer and the empathizer. Systemizers understand their world through uh, analysis and logic, and will intuitively look to understand systems through this analysis. Empathizers, on the other hand, understand their world through social interaction. 
So they will intuitively look to empathize and communicate with people, and that's how they understand their environment. Now, what's important to note is that statistically, on average, more men are found to be systemizers, and more men, oh, sorry, more, and more women are found to be empathizers. So uh, neither one is better or worse than the other. It's just that we tend to be naturally better at one or the other. So bearing this in mind, if men were the ones that initially developed the technology industry, and if they are systemizers, they have created an environment that perfectly suits the systemizer, and that's fine. However, it is not allowing empathizers to flourish. And what we find is that 40% of women leave the technology industry after 10 years. And what a waste of good talent. Why is it that they are leaving the industry and going on to completely different industries, not just different roles? So this is why they're not being allowed to, they're not flourishing. So one of the solutions we have with our parent company, LadyGeek, is we are bringing empathy to the technology industry. And this is where we are training CEOs, MDs, and leaders of these technology companies and bringing empathy to the environment because these are the people that can shape and influence the technology culture. To summarize, it has never been a more important time to get more women into technology. Nearly 50% of tech consumers are female, Technology is helping us grow and build our economy, and technology is shaping our future. With greater diversity leads to greater innovation. And as I previously mentioned, this is not just a gender issue. This is a cultural issue. That means that everyone, man, woman, teachers, parents, schools, the government, the tech industry, we are all responsible in ensuring that women are not going to be left out of the technological revolution. You are all here today because you are passionate about technology. So why not, the next time you're with your friend, your daughter, niece, girlfriend, mother, why not share that passion? Demonstrate how to create technology. Empower them, inspire them to want to change the world through technology. With your help, the next Mark Zuckerberg will be a woman. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> I gave you all the information you needed. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, you said there was uh, three main points uh, that you would like to give a uh, girl's idea to get into the geek industry. And so, uh, the, yeah. uh, the question is uh, here, uh, so maybe the uh, lack of the computer see, of the secondary or uh, yeah, secondary schools, uh, I think secondary schools uh, girls um, teach by uh, computers. So uh, the lack of the system and the equipment uh, can show girls how to deal with computers and system and other stuff. So I think this is a different question. Sorry, what was I can't really hear you. What was your question? Sorry? So the question uh, was um, maybe uh, the main point was uh, the lack of the equipment of the computers and other stuff. So this is the main reason why girls can get into the industry because they are not inspired and blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, you need, a, or this uh, maybe need a different viewpoint. Well, so it's also the lack of equipment in schools. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that's why when I said, who's responsible for ensuring that we inspire girls and boys, that's where the tech industry comes in. You know, we can bring in the equipment from the tech industry, and that's what we do with Little Miss Geek, is our sponsors generously donate the equipment so we can provide schools with the right um, technology so girls and boys have the opportunity to get their hands on and play with the technology. But absolutely, that is a point that's letting them down. But I think the difference is also is that because, as I said, the message is that, you know, boys create, fix things, girls consume, boys have a more sort of confidence and passion to sort of get behind computers and take them apart and explore. 
And so whether the computer is the latest computer or not, boys still have more confidence in approaching the computer where girls lack that. And so it's about building that confidence to make sure that whether it's the latest gadget or not, girls still want to be part of finding out what's going on behind the screen. Thank you. Hello, Hi. you're right. Um, you were talking about empathetic and systematic, uh, and that's probably the case for most industries in terms of there be like an imbalance. Sure. So from what you've seen, what's the most common unempathetic kind of situation specifically to the technology industry? So that's a good question. I think, well, if we look at the way technology is traditionally spoken about, communicated, specifications, that's not sort of natural language that necessarily makes sense to people, especially empathizers. Systemizers, because they sort of, it's about analyzing, you know, the components of something, they can take in that information and understand it. You know, empathizers on the other hand, you know, they look at megapixels, RAM, ROM, and they go, how's that relevant to my life? And so it's, you know, we need to talk in a way that's more relevant to their lives and so they can understand it and it's more sort of open to everyone. But I think that is a sort of one key example. So language. Language, of. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I don't know if you covered this one, but about how did you get into the government and how did you get in front of those MPs? Um, great question. So this is why I love the power of social media and in particular Twitter. I mean, especially, you know, for we are a small company. Um, Lady Geek's been going for three years. Little Miss Geek has only been going is less than a year. And it is incredible the amount of people you can reach, you can get hold of, you can connect with on social media. So, and thankfully, uh, you know, sort of currently a lot of MPs are now, you know, using social media as well. And so it's a great way of getting hold of them. Um, you know, you don't need to be rude or whatever. It's just, you know, saying, hey, look, something needs to be changed here and you get onto them. And they're really good at responding actually. And I think it's also about finding the right MPs. Um, you know, who, who has this on their agenda, who feels passionately about it. Um, and it's also about making sure that this, raising it as a national issue. Um, but a lot of them have been really receptive, but social media is fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> One more. Uh, do Hi. you plan to uh, partner with other organizations such as uh, Girls in Tech, which is an uh, organization out of San Francisco with global reach? And uh, do you have uh, plans to expand in Europe? Yes, absolutely. Um, we already have partners um, across. We've got Ladies Who Code and She++, and there's lots of organizations that uh, we partner with because we've all got the same vision, and it's about coming together and making sure we're all having positive impact. Um, at the moment, because we're still in our infancy, we are sort of more London and UK based, but we absolutely have plans to roll out in Europe and just globally. Um, with Lady Geek, our clients are international, so we have the networks and we want to reach as many girls as we can, so absolutely. Hello. Hi. Uh, you've said that uh, that Lady Geek organization. I, I'm not sure whether I've understood it correctly, but uh, you've said that you are talking to CEOs of uh, uh, in, in uh, tech industry. Yeah. Uh, and you are teaching them how to make the environment more friendly for women. So how can we make the environment mo more female, or how to say it? Okay, so what we do, yes, yeah, so there's Little Miss Geek is our social enterprise, just to clarify. Lady uh, Geek is our sort of uh, consultancy, that's a commercial business. Um, what we do with empathy skills is empathy is all about being able to put yourself into someone else's shoes and being able to respond appropriately to that emotion. So it's lots of different um, techniques we bring. We bring in hostage negotiators, body language experts, and loads of different experts along um, that encompass what it is to be more empathetic. 
Um, and going back to your point, it's all about language. And language, not just verbally, but non-verbally. So our body language. Um, in fact, 80% of communication is actually non-verbal. So it's focusing on how can we be more sensitive to what we're saying with our body? Are we coming in and we're being big and domineering? Or are we being sort of shy and intimidated? So it's sort of training and looking at your body language, also your verbal language, and um, looking out for social cues of how to interact with people, um, and that sort of thing. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> no more questions? Okay, okay. Another one. Have a Thank you. <laughs> um, what programs do you use for the kids when they're doing the coding? So um, our tech clubs aren't just coding. It's oh, they're not just coding. Okay. They're not just coding. No, no. So we have, we do. We've created a whole variety of programs. Yeah, so yeah, we do three D imagery. We've mm -hmm. got. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard of Sphero. It's a brilliant gadget um, that's from Colorado. And essentially, it's just like a white little tennis ball, but got with a little motor inside. And there's an app where you can um, control it just as a remote control and change color. But then you also have an app called Macro Lab. And uh, you can learn basic programming, so you can control it. So you could control it to do a figure of eight by itself or change the colors. So it's a fantastic way of getting girls excited about, you know, what's this mechanical object and how I can manipulate that. Um, so, yeah, with our programs, uh, we also use a lot of Arduino and processing. I mean, a whole variety because we don't want to just sort of be stuck with one. It's about showing, you know, all the opportunities and um, the vari variations of working with technology. So we also do, as you saw, wearable techno technology events. We do um, games design. Um, so it's just trying to open girls' vision up to rather than it just being about numbers and selling it at a computer. It's, you know, it's ev it can encompass everything. Um, when you're doing your courses, yeah. do you ever reintroduce the, the males, the boys, back again? So with the fashion shows, do, do you bring them back in to watch the performances or is there any point where something's being created when the whole year group can then see it or is it kind of very segmented how you do it? Sorry, so do they get to see the overall what they've created? Well, yeah, just in terms of the interaction, I'm just wondering how you structure it. So do... Do at any point is there like male and females kind of watching or okay. playing with what's been created? What, so in the sessions? Yeah, or yeah, at the end right. of the session or at well, any point. We you know, we don't want to alienate men at all because as I said, you know, everyone's responsible in inspiring girls. Um so we do in terms of like trainers and speakers, they're both men and women. Okay. Um so far, um with our tech clubs, they have been at all girls' schools. Um there is a sort of a, a harder issue with tackling when you've got mixed groups, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to STEM subjects. What you tend to find is that in subjects where girls perceive to be more male, they don't perform as well. So actually, it's important to sort of isolate them and build up their confidence and then, you know, reintroduce them when they've got that confidence. But before that, it can be, you know, it's, it's quite difficult dealing with girls when they think, oh, give it to the boys, it's not for me. Okay. Um, so at this stage, we are just focusing on girls' groups, but we still have male role models coming in because that is important. And also, um, to date, what's your like your longest-standing group that you've worked with? So some like a group of kids as further back that you can now say, okay, they were in secondary school and now this many will go in uni. So I don't know how long. What's the furthest back you can go? So. Um, as I said, we, well, we launched last year um, in the Apple Store and Regent Street in October. And um, since then, we've been doing sort of different isolated events. But the one group we've really been working with is St. Xavier's and St. Olive School down in Southwark. Um, and uh, they're, the, they're the school that we've helped increase the number of girls taking ICT, uh, uh, computer science, by 52%. So because we haven't been around for you know, less than a year, we haven't sort of yeah, had yeah, too yeah. much. Um, and we are focusing on younger girls at this stage. We've got other initiatives for sort of older women, um, but we're sort of starting at a younger age, especially to get them, you know, continuing studying computer science. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. 
Yeah, get back to, uh, to this question. Are you yeah. giving back uh, something like a role model or uh, whatever uh, for the girls? For example, after teaching the girls and uh, give them everything, they're gonna give and corporate and at the end of the year they're gonna, I don't know, maybe a, a level of understanding and, uh, and uh, everything. And then is there any point that uh, they can get a feedback or in the next year, like uh, for example, you show them the, maybe the next uh, uh, smaller group is how, what did you reach and, and uh, your results and the group results and other stuff. Um, well, what, in terms of results for the girls we um, work with, we try and do sort of what we call quick, w quick wins or results at each stage because going back to the point of building on these girls' confidence, we want to make sure that they realise that every step of the way they're achieving something and they've got results. So all of our initiatives are, you know, right, saying coming together, showing each other what they've created, you know, girls doing demonstrations, um, so they're always feeling that they and they can look back and say, wow, I didn't know that then, but now I know this and wow, look at what I've created. So it's really important that every stage there's always a recognition of the results. Um, and absolutely what we're doing is as we work with older groups is then getting them to come and speak to the younger girls. So there is that sort of continual cycle. Um, I think role models are really important when it comes to inspiring both boys and girls. Um, because it's showing them, you know, what is a pos what's possible, what's achievable for them potentially in their future. Uh, back to the lectures and after the year, I don't know, uh, did you separate or, or did you mix other people? For example, it's much about teamwork, uh, the question is uh, relating. For example, after the girls have the understanding of uh, the lectures and knowing and the computer science, after the, uh, is there any mixed group or where uh, they can uh, mix with the uh, guys? for uh, I have the confidence, blah, 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 I can understand. So let's uh, work together and let's make something new or I don't know. Yeah, um, so because, well, with some of the schools, they are just girl, girl schools. So it's not necessarily that we're isolating them, but we are just working in environments um, with girls. But we absolutely encourage them to be working with boys and also show off, go, look what I created. Um, a lot of them have uh, either older brothers or younger brothers. And they've, you know, reported to us that they've come back, you know, home and said, shown off to their brothers or, you know, sort of talk them through what they've created. And there's a real sense of satisfaction. Um, but yeah, it's, we don't want to isolate girls. So it's, you know, we don't want to isolate technology that's women and men. Um, it's absolutely about integration. But I think at an early stage, it is sort of working with them individually. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Hi, it's more like a suggestion rather than question. Sure. Every project needs good PR, good press coverage. And I just thought I if 2014 British Got British Talent have an entry of some of you girls doing a project, I think it'd be fantastic. Oh. I, I don't know, or maybe other <laughs> national platforms like Blue Peters, um, um, any morning show, I think any good coverage is good because once the ladies and the girls know how cool, how nice it is, I think it would just go viral, I think. Absolutely. So and that will help with breaking down the sort of stereotypes. If, you know, if we see more women talking about technology more publicly and showing off their success, then absolutely, then younger girls can see, wow, they are, you know, there are women out there doing fantastic things. And it's absolutely about breaking down those stereotypes. But yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Anyone else? No? All right, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your campus festival. Take care.